And welcome, Rooster Boosters. It's Rooster Booster time with the big guy, Scott Ferrara. Um, we're bringing you some weekly content. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying it. The past interview was with Kirk Hamilton. And this week, we actually have a, a really uh, big guest for me. Um, big fan of Chris. Um, not a fan of his high school, but we'll get into that later. Uh, Rooster Boosters, it's Chris Matina. Chris, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Scott. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here and looking forward to talk to you. Awesome. Um, so actually, I'm going to get right into it. Um, you know, in my earlier interviews, I asked guys what they were doing during the COVID situation. Um, you actually have started your own rugby academy, and it's been uh, on social media. So I'm going to, you know, get right into it. It's called the CM Rugby Academy. Um, I was looking online, and uh, the the mission statement starts off um, with. The CM Academy, Chris Mateen Academy, provides personalized high-performance training to unlock the full potential of rugby athletes. So my question to you is, who is your key demographic in that? Is it high schoolers, you know, people looking, you know, kids looking to go into college? Is it, you know, club D1 athletes? Who, who are you looking to help? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much casting a pretty broad net. Um, you know, initially I was thinking more high school and the young college kids. Um, but obviously, I think as it grows, I would like to expand – to even professional um, upperclassmen, kind of kids that are looking to take their game to the next level and play in the MLR or play for sevens or play for the United States of America. Um, and I think my academy is kind of parlaying off of the fact that you can become a professional rugby player now and we need American players in the MLR. So I think the best way to do that is with this kind of more personalized one-on-one -on -one, um, you know, training, which is going to give them insight to what you either need to do to play in the MLR or what you have to do in your college years to get yourself prepared for that next level. So pretty much that college, that high school range at the moment. You know, and I think that's a good range to, to hit at as a demographic because most kids aren't brought into rugby at a young age. You know, I know I wasn't, I started in college and you know, crappy division four. So it's not like I was really, you know, Nate Brakely might say I'm not, not, not even playing rugby in division four, but um, to get that edge for kids who really want to pursue it, that's a perfect time to learn the technique, learn some basics that again, you might be taught um, younger in a different country, but right. to, to get it here, you can definitely use it as an advantage. And I see you've been working with another rooster, Mikey Brown. Mikey's kind of doing some forward drills online. You guys have yeah. some really great videos of the kids. And, you, yeah. you know, I've seen you working on the kicking, which, I've you know, again, no, I can never kick, can't kick a ball worth yeah. a damn. Um, right. So it's it's really nice to see you working with the, the youth athletes uh, in this area at this level. Um, preparing them for college. Um, so my my second question really is, have you always wanted to be on that coaching side of rugby? Yeah, I think I I always have. I think I had a, my a good head on the game, you know, like I have a good understanding of it, and I was really born into it. My dad played rugby. My uncle played rugby. I've been around it for a long time, and um, I just understand it very well, and I understand what it what you kind of need on the skill aspect at least and even in the physical training out of it um in college i studied exercise science and i also got a minor in strength and conditioning and coaching science actually so even in college i i kind of knew that by the time i was done there i was like i think i could be in that coaching realm and i think it's just such an important area in the united states for american players not just the foreign coaches that come over the foreign players come over and i I think they're they do a great job and I think they bring they've taught me so much and you know a lot of these foreign coaches have taught me you know everything I know but I think it is important for American based players to to coach and it, and it's something about being able to connect with the kids maybe more or you know I've been in their shoes before I know the system I know the college system I know the high school system and I think that has 
puts me at a little bit more of an advantage and it also makes me a little bit more personable because I've been in their shoes, you know, as an American player coming up through the system. So I kind of noticed that that was a need in America. And I think, you know, I decided I was always thinking about creating Academy or I was coaching at Xavier a little bit. I graduated. Um, even when I was at Delaware, I was the captain and I was the president of the team too. So I had, you know, I was doing managerial things. I was doing, you know, taking care of pretty much the whole program. Um, yeah. And I kind of enjoyed that a lot. And that was my like senior year, my fifth year. And I think that's when I really knew, like, you know, actually I, I would really enjoy doing it and I did a good job of it, I would say at least. Um, and I think people would back me up on that. So that was kind of like the timeline of like when I started really figuring it out. Um, and then this kind of blossomed out of nowhere. Well, not really nowhere, but it's been a long time coming. So, And I think, you know, for some people, obviously COVID has been a negative, but I think this kind of, it felt like to me, this, you decided this was the time. And, and when the New York opened up, let's get to it. So, yeah, you know, it, yeah. And again, Sorry, it's, it's nice to see it like on social media and, and fans can be a part of it. So rooster boosters uh, at CM rugby Academy, uh, follow them on Instagram. They, they do stuff daily. So I'm going to go back to earlier in your answer. You're talking about, you know, your father playing rugby um, mm -hmm. for an older gentleman. He's rather tall. So I'm going to guess he was a lock. Yes. He played lock and a little bit of back row, a little eight man. I um, mean, my uncle as well is pretty tall. So he, he, they both played in the locks together. Um, ah. So they, I didn't get a, uh, I didn't get his super size, thankfully, but I got um, his athleticism, which was pretty good. <laughs> um, and I just want to touch on your experience at Delaware. Um, you know, I think um, you know some fans might not realize. You know, uh, Division One rugby in in college is still a club sport, technically. Mm -hmm. um, right. So you have to run that managerial administration stuff. And Again, coming from a smaller school who we didn't even have a rugby coach, it was hard to just even get dues and sit money. So how did you, how do you feel at, at UD? Um, did they work well with the rugby program, like the administration? And I'm sure you had to deal with student activities and stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's full club. So we really get the same funding as every other club team, whether it's, you know, club lacrosse, club frisbee, even, you know, we're all getting the same money. Um, and we're all getting this, sharing the same fields. We're all doing very similar things, but you know, we had a, we had an opera, we had a coach as well. Um, and they would kind of help for the coach, but then they didn't. So it was a very mixed bag at the moment. Um, and we really won't get much funding. So a lot of it was just based off of us, um, fundraising and kind of doing things on our own, which obviously is an ideal, but it also teaches you a lot. Um, and you have to have that hierarchy of, you know, the club and the, the treasurer and the, the classic rugby, um, you know, college rugby experience of like that hierarchy and like having to deal with everything like that, um, which is good and a bad thing. But I do believe that if rugby wants to, if we want to take rugby to the next level, we need schools like Delaware, like Penn State, kind of these bigger schools to either give scholarships if limited or to at least help fund and kind of promote um, rugby in a sense where it's like, we're progressing these athletes to be professionals rather than that club side of things, where it's a little bit more, you know, I think a, a combination of both worlds would be ideal. Um, but yeah, it, it was tough, but we were very good. You know, we finished third in the country and in sevens one year and, you know, we we're decent at 15s, but you know, we did the best with what we had. Nice. I mean, again, it's definitely an experience and I just, I want to touch on it because I don't know how much of our foreign fans understand the way it works in college rugby. And now, you know, I'm sure with the MLR draft, they were even more confused because it's not mm -hmm. the system they use. So I just wanted to touch yeah. on it. Um, so I'm going to get to some, uh, some actual Rooney questions. So my first question is, this is the first qu time I've actually asked this question. Um, playing at MCU park, how hard is it kicking towards that goalpost that's in center field? That is my nightmare, <laughs> to be honest. It is, and it's also Marshy's fault, actually, because every time that he wanted, every time we're kicking into the wind, he's like, ah, oh, my groin hurts. Like, you can take this one, which is why he had one of the best kicking percentages in the league. So he made me take all the hard ones into the wind. Um, but it is hard, man. It really is. The wind just comes off that ocean, and 
it's just swirling around and you really have no idea, you know, where it's going to go. <laughs> you have to really stay calm and, and ease your swing through it, but it's very tough. Uh, it's very tough. And when you have the wind at your back, though, you can kind of hit them from all over the place. And the wind is usually coming off the ocean. So on the other side, it's, it's not bad. The ball flies off your foot. But kicking into that wind is, yeah, it's nightmare feel for me. <laughs> um, it's funny because I believe it had to have been Harry Bennett. I was watching in 2019, you know, sitting in my seat. And I think he tried for like five conversions or two conversions or three. He had five kicks and all of them went up to that, to that goalpost stalled and just dropped like a stone. And, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's just unbelievable because you might get it there and it looks perfect. And then it'll just go straight down. And it's just like, what, like, what else do I have to do? Yeah. It's, it's interesting playing there. And I think people who don't, see it live appreciate it because you can actually feel that breeze nine times out of ten coming off of that uh that center field wall which is interesting for baseball because you know the balls are it's you know it's even for a different sport like why would you put a uh, put yourself at a disadvantage playing there but (laughs) i mean i'm sure they could have done something they could have done something to to change it but yeah i don't know i'm sure the baseball players hate it too (laughs) um so the, getting on that same feel about Rooney, about game day, um, what's your normal game day, like pregame routine? Like, you know, Mike and, and Dylan had the same routine, which isn't totally unexpected considering how much time they, they're together. But I mean, do you have like a specific thing? Is it the songs? Is it, you know, analyzing stuff? Is it just hanging out? Yeah, for me, I try and stay away from the rugby stuff. Um, I usually try and do that one or two, you know, the whole week is basically a buildup. Um, and if you haven't done your homework, it's like if you haven't studied for the test and you try and study right before the test, you're not going to be prepared. So it's it's pretty similar to that. And, you know, you just use the whole week to study and get prepared and, and do everything you can up until that captain's run. And then after that, you're usually, you know, I'm usually away from rugby a little bit, trying to take some downtime. Um, in the morning, a nice big breakfast, and then, you know, get on the drive drive there or in the subway there, um, and then just listen to my music pretty much. And I us- usually do, you know, try and get myself a little pumped up, but I usually try and go even keel uh, into the game just to kind of keep my mind clear. And if I go in with any preconceived notions, then it affects my decision making, I think. So I usually just try and keep everything pretty calm um, and then just get my music ready and then. Just get in, get into the sheds with the boys, and you know, get hyped up and get get out there. So. Yeah, wait, wait for that first hit. That's that seems to be the through line. Stay yeah. calm, and then once you're on the line for that first hit, get it over with. And you just had 15 seconds yeah. of craziness, and now you're back to it. Um, you actually touched on my my next question, which was, what do you eat pre match? Um, a lot of guys, uh, well, according. <laughs> Dylan is was doing intermittent fasting, so his schedule always changed depending on kickoff time. Right. Mikey Brown swore he didn't eat a lot. Rob swore he didn't eat a lot. Kirk mm-hmm. Hamilton called bullshit on that. So I'm just wondering. So you have a big breakfast. What does your big breakfast consist of? Yeah, usually it's it'll be eggs and toast, or you know, sometimes I, even before that Utah game and the snow uh, last year, I had like a huge waffle, like chocolate chip waffle. I don't know what, what came over me, but, um, for some reason, a waffle, at least half of a waffle before just charges me up with the carbs. And I think the sugar kind of gets to me too, which would help. So I actually have a pretty decent sized breakfast and then I probably will have a little snack, you know, some nuts or something before the game. Um, but I, for me, carbs, I need some type of carb before the game, even before training. Like if I don't eat before training or have carbs, then, you know, I feel hungry or low on energy. And I think it changes for everyone. Like I've heard people that don't eat anything. They like to feel light, you know, all that. But I've, I've kind of done a little test. And if I don't have carbs, I'm not happy. <laughs> so usually have something big with carbs. Um, and then I'm usually good to go. So I have a little bar before the game. And make sure I have a little Gatorade, a little water. That's about it. Nice. Yeah, you know, it is. It's tailored nutrition, tailored to each individual person. And I think it, I've had this discussion with Jake Fury. We talked about it for like 20 minutes about how nutrition and high performance workouts have now worked into people's everyday lives, even if they're not a professional rugby player. Um, so 
yeah so it's so it's i i love to hear everybody's little kind of details on what they do um as a matter of fact you were talking speaking about the waffle and the carbs and the sugar uh former michigan coach uh, football coach brady hoke used to give all his players a, a Krispy cream donut right before kickoff yeah and- <laughs> that would be perfect for that. you know like that is that sounds like what has worked for me in the past so i don't doubt yeah. it i don't doubt it at all so i, I mean i can see the if you're not like ready physically you know that might hurt you but if you're ready physically um and like before the game you're gonna burn off you know you can lose like four or five pounds in the middle of a game just from sweating so if you want to keep your sugar and your carb and your energy high you kind of have to do something like that at least for me um but i can definitely see the, the donut thing that'd be great <laughs> i think uh kurt said last week that he after i think it was the austin game or houston houston game uh, last season he lost 12 pounds from kickoff to 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 the end of the yeah. game, um, I don't which you know, sweat <laughs> yeah, I, I, and you know, obviously, you're going to cut that water weight somehow. Uh, so why, why not play to do it playing rugby? Um, yeah. Here, you know what? Here's a question. I, I'm kind of going off topic. Um, World Rugby has put in uh, maybe some changes to rugby law about less substitutions, um, and right. Kurt and I talked about rugby being a game of attrition. But you also have to balance that with player safety. So, what yeah. do you think about having one less replacement? Um, I, you know, I think I do agree with the um, the injury uh, comment. I think, the, especially now in today's game, with it being so physical and so fast, and you know, there's a lot more conditioning that goes into it. Um, I think that extra guy does go a long way. And I think you have seen injury rates in rugby kind of go down for the most part um, at the higher level just because, you know, they might have more subs. They have less time on their feet. Um, they have less game time and stuff like that just to kind of keep your team healthy. And I think that goes into just the strategic makeup of your team and your depth of your team. Um, do I, I don't know if one less sub would really – I think it would change a little bit, but I think teams would just go two backs on the bench and then keep all their forwards. So, you know, instead of just having an extra back, you just not have an extra back, which would be good for right. utility guys. You know, it would be great for me probably because, you know, depending on where anywhere, I'm, yeah. um, I can just, you know, play anywhere and then – either I can move around or that guy comes on, moves me to another spot or whatever. So I think, you know, it might make it interesting, but I don't think it's smart for the injury, you know, substitution. So mm-hmm. like we were playing, if we had one last sub and had uh, San Diego semifinal, Marcus Walsh would have been playing yeah. like inside center or something. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think that's ideal. No, it's not. And I agree with you. I, I think in the, let's say 20 years ago or 30 years ago it, each position was a little less specialized except for like maybe kicking or you know the the props just ha- props and locks just have to be naturally tall for a lock and wide for a prop but now each position is so specialized i think it's a disincentive not to have that extra spot because yeah. as as rooney saw i mean two weeks in a row they, they lost a starting lock and yeah. now they had to rush out they had to get charlie hewitt and they had to get Hanko so they can move Brakely inside. And imagine if that happened once, you know, if, if both those locks go out in the same game, you know, uh, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. So I think it, while it is a war of attrition, you do have to go with player safety. And I don't think, again, I don't think it's going to change anything dramatically other than guys now are more tired. And I feel they're going to make more mistakes that can get you hurt versus yeah. making a bad pass that's going to be intercepted and look good for a try. Um, yeah, for sure. I think the injury, like injuries always happen when you're tired, right? Or mm-hmm. most, like 80% of the injuries happen when you're tired. So, you know, if there are more tired bodies out there, yes, it might be more exciting, but it also adds that injury, which I don't think they're re- willing to uh, to trade. So, mm-hmm. so and you, you touched on being a utility player. And I mean, we've seen you pretty much play every position in the back line and to be mm-hmm. honest if if coach uh mcwilliams was like hey you got to play eight man or you got to play flanker pretty sure you would jump right in um but yeah. what do you what's your natural position in the back line yeah so that's a it's a tough question you know and i think growing up i was always a fullback i was always a fullback you know and i think that's where i 
was at my best. Um, and we have a lot of good folks there at the moment. Um, and, you know, I just – I haven't played – so much center in my life you know i've probably played this was the first year i've ever played 12 realistically um in my life and i think it's just because i know the game really well and i've been skilled enough to be there um but at the end of the day i think when i'm at my best with body weight and i'm at my best playing weight i would say that fullback is my you know number one position and position that i like the most because it has the most space um you know i've kind of been it's tough because, like, obviously Fodes is there, and he's he's such a good player. Um, so I can't, you know, knock that at all or um, and anything. So you know, I think I would like to be at fullback, but obviously, like, I do like to play a little bit of ten. Um, don't know if centers is where my natural, you know, position is. I think I can just play pretty well there. But at the end of the day, if I'm going the next level, I would say you know, fullback or back three. You know, I, I mean, viewing your playing style, I agree. And maybe it's just because you played 15 when you were young, you know, so much. Yeah. I mean, you have a big cool. booming kick. And that actually, that has helped you at center, believe it or not, because you, you've had to go back uh, sometimes at center when, when when people aren't back or, you know, Fodes goes up. And you naturally kind of have hung back and then out maneuvered somebody on a big booming kick where, where you know, opposition is going like, oh, shit, you know, I, mis- I misjudge this. So... Two things. One, I think you make a great fullback, you know, and Fodes makes a great fullback. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to be like, you know, who fits the position better. But because you are you can play center, mm-hmm. why wouldn't Coach McWilliams put you on the field there? Because he wants you on the field, yeah. you know? Exactly, but it has to feel yeah. good. Well, yeah, it does. No, I enjoy it, you know. And I think it, it just helps me understand everyone's place as well. So, it gives me a, just a better understanding of everything. And I think I've grown a lot. I grew a lot in that 12 jersey, um, even just in terms of my voice on the field and what I'm seeing and what I'm reacting to and kind of bossing the forwards around. Um, I think I was finding a pretty nice groove, actually, before the whole COVID thing hit. So it was a bit unlucky for me, but it's been nice to use this time to to get everything right in terms of my body and, and all that and kind of just focus on myself rather than focusing on you know everything else, I guess. So I think that's a good major takeaway. But yes, I agree. Um, it is a tough. It's a tough position, but it's not a bad one to be in. Absolutely. Um, and again, you know, it's nice for you to to say with COVID, you know, a lot of downside, but you've you've taken the time to you know be t- mentally healthy. You know, it seems yeah. like you take you taking some time for yourself away from rugby, and those hits take a toll on your body, obviously. Um, so it's nice to see you using the break in a a smart manner, and and you know, again, just doing what you want to do in the the academy, and not really, you know, taking the taking the negatives out of everything. It's it's you have always been a positive person, which is always nice to see. Um, so my next question, because I, I always ask everybody this, so I wonder, it's funny, everybody's been in the typical, I'd say, age range of myself, so the answers have been similar in some of them, but uh, what's your favorite sports movie? Favorite sports movie? Um, ooh, that's tough. I mean, Friday Night Lights is a classic. Um, let's see. Um, I don't know that. That's a really tough one. That's a really tough one. What were some of the other answers? Uh, let's. I there. What Butch, Mike, and Rob, uh, all said. Remember the Titans. Yeah, yeah. Remember that. that's what I was. That's so, the one I was missing. Yeah, sure. so, and remember I think that. that's. Yeah. I mean, that's everyone's favorite, to, to be honest. Um, I think it's I'll one of those. A, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, I, I th- it's one of those like I remember watching it uh, when I was in elementary school and it was raining outside for for recess and they put on a movie and it was two movies yeah. The Sandlot and Rem- Remember the Titans. Yeah, I Remember uh, the Titans. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would say I also like Happy Gilmore if you want to put that as a sports movie. <laughs> it's a sport. It's hockey and golf. You can't go wrong yeah, with that. Yeah, exactly. And it's just a classic. So many quotable, you know, many quotes in that are just memorable. Um, so I think that's that's another one for me. That's one of my up there in terms of funny and stupid movies. But. <laughs> um, that's great. You know, I think it's a it's a good question to ask guys about sports movies because 
a lot of guys might not pick a sports movie about the sport they're in. Um, so here's here's a specific question about a sport you're not in. If you weren't playing professional rugby, what professional sport would you want to play? Yeah, uh, football would be my yeah, number football. one. Um, yeah, just growing up, like I always wanted to play in the NFL. I always wanted to be a wide receiver in the NFL, and that was my that was my goal. You know, I always thought that I was good enough, and I was really a good wide receiver, even just playing like flag football and. You know, I was, I thought I was really good. I had good hands. You know, I was, I was pretty quick. Um, I was pretty tall. So I always thought, you know, maybe I'll try and make it as a wide receiver, but obviously Xavier doesn't throw the ball at all. Um, <laughs> no. We run a single offense, which is Wildcat 24 seven. And I, there was just no opportunity for me to play uh, receiver, but obviously professional rugby and being able to play for, in the sevens team is, you know, it couldn't have gone any better, I guess, besides the, besides the NFL. Um, but, you know, I think NFL for sure. And my dad played football growing up too, and then he found rugby um, in college. So it was kind of similar for me. It was like I wanted to play football, and then I found it in high school, found rugby in high school, and I was like, all right, well, rugby's better. <laughs> so I'm going to choose that. <laughs> Listen, you got to play what you're comfortable in and – live comfortably at the moment so if it was football and then rugby who cares you know you found what you love yeah. to do yeah for sure and I, I played a lot of other sports you know basketball and soccer and um i did like i liked them but i was just good at them because you know i was like a decent athlete um but football and rugby were probably my number my top two of just you know what i wanted to do and that was like my dream for you know the longest time i was young was just like play wide receiver and you know, I was watching like Ocho Cinco and you know, all these guys playing wide receiver. I was like, I really want to do that. So yeah, it was, it's a close one, but rugby definitely took took me over. So what year did you graduate from Xavier? Graduated from Xavier in 2011. Oh, never mind. Because I, I, was, I was wondering if we, if we ever played against each other. I graduated from Iona Prep in 05, so it wasn't even close. Yeah, yeah. We're, a little, we're a little ways off. A little ways yeah. off. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, there's a lot of Catholic high schools in the state of New York New and New Jersey and Connecticut. Uh, Xavier and Iona play each other in the same uh, league in every sport. Um, and uh, Xavier has a rugby team. Uh, Xavier High School, uh, Fordham Prep, I think, has a rugby team. Um, then a bunch of the local uh, public high schools, Pelham, Rye, Scarsdale, I believe, has rugby teams. And I think one of the things that the Chris Matina Rugby Academy can do is show kids that are already in rugby, you know, obviously you can do better. You can you can make more of a contribution by learning this way, which you've you've shown the pathway to get to not only professional rugby, but to become, you know, in the USA system, which I think is every kid's dream growing up as a rugby player is to get into that eagle spot. Um, but I also think it's going to broaden the horizon of everybody else in the state and maybe have some of these high schools say, Hey, we should have a rugby team because it does bring athletes a different viewpoint of being on the field besides the same old sports. We always have football, hockey, baseball, lacrosse, that type of thing. Um, so I think your Academy is going to go beyond just helping rugby players. And I think it's going to push rugby out there um, to the different school districts believe it or not because i because people are going to talk it's going to become a thing I, it's already becoming a thing on social media um and i i wholeheartedly believe that um that that's it right now for me chris um i thank you so much for being on again you you, you know i love what you're doing with the chris uh, matina rugby academy again at cm rugby academy on instagram um they're posting stuff daily whether it's mental rep monday or what they're doing with with their guys throughout the week um you can see you know, and you actually break it down. Like you were breaking down the kicking, like this is what we're trying to accomplish. This is what this kid's trying to, then this is the next thing he's trying to accomplish. And then the third step. Um, so anybody, yeah, with IQ or want to look at, look, you know, just interested in rugby IQ, please follow them, give them a follow on Instagram and anything else you want to say, Chris? No, I just appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I guess my vision just for the Academy is, you know, just it, obviously what you said is just to increase everything, just showcase it, um, kind of build that presence, build up the rugby community here, um, and then just kind of provide more that personal coaching. And I think that's the biggest thing for me that I wish, you know, I, I had really good coaching and I've had the pleasure of having good coaching. And I feel like I find a lot of guys now that, you know, they, they might have some decent coaches, but they, they might not have all the time to just correct, 
you know, these little tiny things that I can really pinpoint and do within, you know, one to three people, one to three, four people in, in your session. Um, and I think even within a month, I've seen between 12 to 15 kids from all different types of, all different types of programs just in, you know, in the area and all different types of skill sets. And I think even within one to two sessions, they're just like, oh, okay. Like it's kind of like an aha moment of, you know, you know, this is, this is what I need, or this is, these are the type of things. And I'm kind of just preparing them for beyond the Academy where they're, they just start to give themselves feedback and they can start to give themselves, you know, the, the proper cues and proper techniques so that when they're doing it on their own, cause they're working hard, but they're doing it properly instead of kind of without any, you know, type of direction. So that's kind of just what I've been doing and obviously just in a good way and positive way. So, you know, I think if I do that, it'll be successful. So I'm really looking forward to it and building it more. So appreciate it. Absolutely. That. Thanks, man. Uh, listen, uh, the, it's a, a pleasure to have you on again. Try He's trying to raise the profile of rugby throughout uh, the tri-state area. If you are a high school student or a college student looking to get some help uh, prior to your rugby season, check them out again on their Instagram at CM rugby Academy, uh, hit Chris up with a private message, you know, he'll get involved in your rugby life. And that's, that's where you want to be. That's where he wants to be. Uh, Rooster boosters. Thank you again. Uh, it's been another great episode. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Thanks.